Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting, and we are working on the chapter 2 problems, the group B, and uh, this here happens, that this is the last one in the series that we have to do for this chapter, so um, it's problem 2-42, and most likely we'll complete this particular problem in one video, so, um, and that'll be, uh, we'll be finished with uh, chapter 2, so. As, as always, if you don't understand something, you know, rewind and watch the video again. Go back and watch the theory videos, and if you still don't understand, you know, feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor, okay? All right, um, and remember, this is a learning experience. It's uh, different than doing, like, math for business and finance. Um, I, you know, it's one thing to uh, read a problem and just be able to, you know, change the numbers and and do them the same exact way 10 different times versus understanding concepts and then applying them to the situation. And part of that understanding of the concepts is, that, you know, I have, to, I'm you know, kind of having to draw the lines as to where I keep on explaining the same thing again and again and again and again and again, because they're the underlying concepts. So as we go forward, you know, everything is a building process. So, um, you know, just realize that like this particular problem is not the same as problems 40 and 41 okay so uh, just bear things in mind you know I'll try to you know explain as much as possible but if you still don't get it um, like I said feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor all right so let me get my pen all right and it says here the following errors occurred in the accounting records of Coral Cove all right um, the requirements are prepare the necessary journal entries to correct each of these errors and for each error, determine if the error would cause net income to be overstated, understated, or unchanged. So remember, net income is on our income statement, right? So, and on our income statement, it's revenues less our expenses gives us a profit or a loss. So um, we have to determine if revenues or expenses would change, which would cause them, you know, cause the net income to be overstated, understated, or unchanged. All right. So, uh, letter A: the company accountant recorded the receipt of cash for service revenue by debiting cash for $470 instead of the correct amount of $740. Service revenue was also credited for $470, the incorrect amount, right? So, um, so we're recording the receipt of cash for service revenue, right? So the transaction should have been and it's in the amount of $740. So, you know, what's the transaction saying? Am I affecting cash? Yes. Okay, is cash increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. So, cash is an asset, and I increase my assets on the debit side. So, I would debit my cash for $740, and then I have to credit something else, and I'm going to credit service revenue. And that's the correct journal entry that should have been made. So this one is wrong, and obviously this one is right. Okay. So now, how do we make the uh, correcting journal entry? Well, obviously, it's the difference between the, the two. So um, let's just take a look at it from the perspective of, um, I mean, you could do this a couple of different ways. I mean, like, for example, here, I have a debit of 470, but I need a debit of 740. So the difference between the two is seven um, uh, two hundred and seventy dollars. So that means I have to debit my cash two hundred and seventy more dollars, right? So I would debit my cash an additional two hundred and seventy dollars, and I would credit my service revenue for two hundred and seventy dollars, and that is my uh, correcting and journal entry. All right. Now, you could have gone and went and did it like this. You could have went and 
drew T accounts and made this one cash and made this one service revenue. And you could have said, okay, um, for my uh, entry, I had debited cash for 470 and credited my service revenue for 470, all right? But um, I'm supposed to have 740, right? in both accounts, right? So in order to get the balance in the account to 740, that means I would have to make another entry of 270, which would then give me my balance of 740, right? And that would be 270 there and would make that 740. And so that's what it looks like in T account form. And then I would go and make my adjusting journal entry here to debit the cash and to credit the service revenue for 270. So that's my uh, necessary adjusting, correcting journal entry. Now the question is, you know, is my net income overstated, understated, or unchanged? Okay. Well, let's come over here and look at our revenues. All right. Um, we had uh, we had put $470 in revenue. Okay, and it you know. It doesn't matter how much the expense was. And let's just make the expense $200. Okay, so that means I have a profit of $270. No, not make it a 200. Make it 100. Actually, I wouldn't even make it. I just look at it. But I'm going to put a hard number in here, so it's a little bit easier to to grasp. So we have a profit of 370. Now the question is. You know, is my uh, net income un over, under, overstated, understated, or unchanged? Well, if I go and I say, okay, I'm supposed to have 740, and I have 100 in expenses, then that means I have 600. It should be 640, right? Because this is how much it's supposed to be. Well. If I made the entry for 470, uh, meaning um, I ended up with a profit of 370, well, obviously that's understated because I'm supposed to have 640. I'm supposed to have more than what I actually have, so it is understated. Now I suggest that you do, you know, this type of thing. Okay, by plugging in numbers, and you don't need to have you know you make up numbers as you go. I mean, sure, um, I'm using I'm using the hard number of 470 here and and 740, and yes, I'm making up this 100 and this 100, but I could have just as easily made it 50. I could have made it 75. I could have made it 600. It doesn't matter. The net effect is still going to be that uh, it's understated. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter what number I put in for the expense. Okay, and that's why I said, oh, well, I probably wouldn't even use a number. Okay, and you know, if I don't use a number, what does that look like? Well, if I had, let's see here, if I had zero for my expense, that means I had $470 for profit. A net income, and if I have if I have zero for my expenses, well, that's seven hundred and forty dollars my profit. I'm still understated because I don't have enough. Okay, so it doesn't matter what number you use for your expense. Just you know, the whole idea is is when you want to figure this out, plug in the numbers into what you know, and you know, do you know if you're not comfortable with just one number, you know, do it a couple of different times, and that's how you figure out. Um, whether you're understated, overstated, or unchanged. Okay, so that was A, and I took 10 minutes to do that, so uh, maybe I might need more than one uh, uh, video in order to, to do this. Okay, you erase all this. Okay, let's see here. All right, there we go. All right, so B. A $225 purchase of supplies on account was recorded by debiting accounts payable for 225 
and crediting supplies for 225 okay you know so we're purchasing supplies on account okay so in making a journal entry let's make the correct journal entry and then compare the two you know am i affecting cash no okay so the second question I ask myself is, am I affecting accounts receivable or accounts payable? Yes, I'm affecting accounts payable. Accounts payable is, is a liability, okay? And if I had zero for accounts payable and I'm purchasing an additional 225, is my accounts payable uh, increasing or decreasing? Well, it's increasing. And since accounts payable is a liability account and I increase my liability on the credit side, I should have a credit to accounts payable for 225, and that means I have to debit something else. What am I going to debit? Well, supplies for 225. Okay, so that's my correct entry. Right. So now we have to figure out, you know, what the adjustment should be. Okay. Well. If I'm, if here is zero, right, and over here, you know, I um, debited accounts payable, which means I decreased my accounts payable by 225, right, but I'm supposed to be increasing my accounts payable by 225. Well, it takes me 225 to get to zero plus another 225 in order to get to the credit of 225. So I actually have to credit my accounts payable by $450. Okay. And of course, debits have to equal credits. So I debit my supplies for $450. And that's my correcting journal entry. Okay. Um, let's look at, you know, make T accounts, accounts payable, and supplies. Right. Well, if I debited 225 and credited 225, all right, and I'm supposed to have a credit of 225 and a debit of 225 here, how do I get to those balances? Okay. Well, obviously, when I subtract debits from credits, okay. I need to make this for 450, right? Because a debit of 225, take 450 minus 225 gives me 225. And since my credit is greater than my debit, that gives me my debit of 225. I'm sorry, my credit of 225. So um, I have a credit for accounts payable for 450 and a debit to supplies for 450 which is what my journal entry looks like, okay? Now, um, from the perspective of, um, is it overstated or understated? Okay, so if I originally had a, you know, I, I'm on my income statement, I don't have to look at accounts payable, I'm looking at its supplies, okay? Um, And the question, um, when I'm looking at supplies and accounts payable, are they revenue accounts or are they expense accounts? You know, we know accounts payable is not revenue or an expense, and the supplies is an asset account, right? So it's not affecting revenues or expenses, so my net income, you know, would remain unchanged, okay? Because I'm just not affecting those accounts. All right. Okay, so um, I'm at 14 minutes, and I, you know, it took two, 14 minutes to do two, and I have two more to go. So I'm going to pause the video here, and pick up with part B in the next one, uh, part two in the next one, so we can finish off this problem.